Hola and welcome to Messy Kitchen with F, P, and B. I am Franks, and Pager is standing behind the camera there. She's my little helper, she's my sidekick. Couldn't do anything without her. So, we're going to try to make this as quick and painless as possible because we are doing corn, beef, and cabbage. St. Patty's edition. St. Patty's edition. This month we're going to try to concentrate on everything Irish. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, ah, you know. So we're going to do this in several segments. Like I said, we're having corned beef and cabbage with a side of um, carrots, potatoes, and of course the cabbage. And hopefully we are going to make this really good creamy horseradish sauce that you can put on over your vegetables and maybe a gravy. But I am going to make a traditional Irish soda bread that is filled with cheese. But like I said, we'll get through this as quick as we can. So the first thing is I take off my sweater because it's going to get messy. I actually cleaned my sink out for it, so feel privileged I cleaned my sh sink out for you, okay? Mm. First, you're going to go to the store and pick yourself out a ground beef brisket, all right? And you can see this is the way it comes. And this one didn't come with a packet, so that's actually going to cause a problem for me. There's a little hiccup in everything you do. Because when you buy this, you want to wash it off first to get some of that excess salt off of it. But you're supposed to keep your package goodies, so I don't know how to do that because we need those package goodies. Uh, uh, so, oh, I got an idea. I got an idea. You know what? Things like this happen all the time. I don't know if this is going to work or not. I'm going to stay still here. Let's do this. Alright. For the love of everything, just be just. I told y'all I was going to try to make it fast, and of course, I pick out the only roast beef, not roast beef, beef brisket without just the seasoning packet. And I didn't buy everything for the seasoning itself, so let's see if there's any way we can save this. I'm going to use my water, my strainer to see if I can catch those herbs and spices because I really, really need those. Okay. Yeah. Try this again. Okay. Right, let's see if this is going to work, everybody. I don't know if it will, but we're going to try. You need all the blood and stuff, too? No, I just need those seasons. Maybe it is in a packet. Oh, man, it is in a packet. It's just freaking tape to it. It is? No, maybe not. There's a clip on it. Oh, crap. I guess not. I don't know. There's all the seasons and the spices. Okay, how are we going to do this? I'm supposed to wash this. Yep. Guess whoever packaged this one would not make employee of the month. Well, I think it's that brand, but I do need the seasonings. So don't worry about doing this at home. This is just I wasn't paying attention attention to the packaging on it. And since I don't put this every year, you know, who would, who would memorize that anyway? Okay, so hopefully, okay, so that worked. We got the seasonings. Woo! We did those. So you need to wash this off. Um, I know it doesn't stay in a lot of directions, but when you research into it a little bit more, they'll say you need to rinse this off nice and good or as best as you can because it'll take out all that extra salt. This recipe is salty enough without the salt from the meat. Okay, now I'm going to traipse all the way over to the other side of the kitchen here into the pan. And I'm going to put this, you come over here if you want to, Paige. I'm going to put it with the meat side up. Okay, and then what I'm going to do, <sighs> now this also, you can see the other recipes, it is supposed to be four cups of your Guinness, which is two bottles. But I only have one bottle, so I'm going to kind of split it. One bottle, which is two cups of the Guinness, and I'm going to use two cups of the beef broth. There we go. Like so. Now, we're going to get all those little things that we needed in the first place. Let's see if we can get them in here. So now if you have a packet with the seasoning, this is when you put it in. And this one, so at least we got some of it in. Believe me, next time I'm going to make sure the packet is in there because this is kind of a pain in the ass. Okay, so if hey, Paige, why don't you stand on this side? Hey, <laughs> there! Ooh, Paige isn't talking today. All right, so after this, I'm going to add, actually, they didn't really specify how much. I'm going to say put at least mm, a half a teaspoon of salt, I mean, the garlic powder. I'm just going to kind of dab it in there a little bit. Called for fresh garlic, but I've been out for a little while and I forget to sock then a dab of cinnamon again just a little bit in there don't want too much you're gonna put then some mushroom starter sauce I believe it's like two and a half to two tablespoons I'm gonna put in your typical salt here we go you're gonna put in about two teaspoons maybe 
Tell me if I messed up, I'll put it on the bottom when it's supposed to be, and then your pepper. Okay. Now the next thing you do is you go ahead and turn your stove on high, and we're going to wait for it to boil. Now, don't boil it and walk away. As soon as it starts to boil, you are going to go ahead and put your lid down and put it on simmer. Then you can walk away for three hours, and it's pretty much done. Uh, um, oh. A little piece of information that you should know is that for every pound that you have of your meat, you cook the meat for 45 to 50 minutes. Mine was four pounds, four and a half pounds, so I'm going to probably cook it. So two and a half hours, I'll go three. You want it to slow cook. If you cook it on high the entire way, your meat becomes very tough and rubbery. But if you do it the low heat, then it becomes very tender and juicy, the kind that you want. And I'll see you guys back here when we need to prep the vegetables. All right. Oh la, we are back because like uh, we've had the corned beef in there for a while now, and but I wanted to do this new horseradish cream sauce. It's supposed to be really good over your vegetables, but I'm going to just make it on the side for people who want it or people who don't want it. So um, technically it seems pretty easy to me. But I don't need this there anymore. What they say it's to start off with, I'm doing a double batch, remember. So. I'm going to add two cups, two cups of sour cream, and yes, this is two cups because Paige and I looked it up, and thank you Google for all your wonderful information that you give us all the time on a daily -day basis. Alright, what's the next thing? So, four tablespoons unsalted butter, and oh, I'm always forgetting something, and it's my butter, I forgot my butter, but I'm going to use my homemade butter. Where did I just see that? Oh, for crap's sake. Stupid, 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 stupid cooking alert. I was looking at the, the beef. Pardon me for I don't need butter. I don't need butter. So, it's two tablespoons of prepared horseradish. So, two tablespoons, which would be four tablespoons. That seems like a lot of horseradish. Ooh, this stuff is strong, too. Ooh, I don't know if I'm going to ask for it. Well, what did I say? I'll... Okay, let's use the half one. You need a tablespoon of Dijon mustard. I did not have the Dijon mustard, so we're gonna go with spicy brown mustard. So let's go ahead. Should have had this all prepared, but we did it. One, we'll do a double, so I'll have to do two. All right, this looks like a really, really weird concoction so far. One teaspoon of white wine vinegar, which is, to me, it's gonna be two. Two, just two of this. I've never had white wine vinegar before in my life. This will be a first. What does it smell like? Let's see. It smells like a vinegar. vinegar. <laughs> it smells like vinegar. Not like the really strong vinegar that you usually get in the big pockets or gallons that you have. Uh, uh, let's see. One fourth teaspoon salt, ground back black pepper, and a little bit of sugar. So this is what I usually do at this point stage. Just put it in there. Don't want to deal with it anymore. I've been patient as I could be this recipe. Ain't doing it, man. And we don't like as much sugar either in this house, so let's see, how much sugar was it? A fourth of dough. They don't ask for much either, so I'm just going to put a little bit in here, like so. So now, let us, uh, oh my god, it looks like a suicide. <laughs> I don't know, I've never made, no, you want to make a dollar? You're going to dare me to taste this, Yeah, right I'm going to dare you to taste well, it. Well, you know what, we have to taste it anyway. Occurrence. Then yes, oh wait. I actually think it needs, I cut back on the horseradish, I think it needs more. Because I taste more of the sour cream than I do with anything. I hardly taste it at all. Is it good? Well, it's just, I can't, it just tastes like, like sour cream to me. It doesn't, I don't, I'm not getting any other flavor from it. I mean, there's a little hint of the horseradish. And I did cut back, so I'm going to try to add a little bit more. Just smell the mustard coming off of this thing. Oh yeah, it's the only person I know that sniffs their food. I see people sniffing their wine all the time, but not their food. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know if they're going to like this or not, but you know, it's a traditional dip, so we're done with that. And I'm just going to go ahead and put that in the refrigerator and cut. Cut? What's up, buddy? I don't know. All right, guys. Yep, we're up and we are rolling again with Messy Kitchen. And if I didn't say it before, I am Franks and Pager is behind the camera there. Hello. We are going to try to do a couple things up right now. 
because the corned beef is still cooking slowly on the oven. We are going to go ahead and prep our vegetables for this dish, and then we're going to put those to the side, and we are actually going to make a, ch a cheddar soda bread, which is an Irish bread. It does not have any yeast, therefore it doesn't really rise. But I thought it'd be a nice twist, something different, just like our creamy horseradish relish sauce. That's a hard word to say too. So let's just get going on prepping and what you need for these vegetables. We're just going to get them ready. We're just prepping right now because we're going to go into the bread. All right, so just go ahead on these larger potatoes. Go ahead and cut them. And I so the potatoes are done. I'm just going to set these to the side for now. And then with the carrots, I have six of them. Like I said, I had already peeled them. Just go ahead and cut off the ends. And they say do about three inches per cut. I'm just gonna, you know, cut them up here. I'm not too particular. This is a good time for you to preheat your oven on 400 for the Irish bread that we're gonna make. So let's go ahead and put this on now before we forget, or I forget, I shouldn't say we. This is a me thing. Okay. And I don't know how many people are familiar with breaking cab cabbage up or even with a whole head of lettuce, and hopefully this is going to work. But a lot of times in the restaurant business, if I would just bang down on it a couple times really good, cabbage is always harder to do. Well, look, didn't do a damn thing. It usually works. So I need to cut that core out. You do not want the core of this in with your food. So apparently my banging on it didn't do anything. It's not doing anything. Well, four week or no weeks, nothing is working on my kitchen today. Okay, fine. Things are going to be spilled on this shit today, so I'm just going to tear it apart. Maybe. Let's see. Well, if life was perfect, you would have just taken out this core. For this recipe, they say for you to chunk it. You don't need to dice it up because you still want those full big leaves in there at the end. And I'm going to add these with the carrots because they go in at the same time. I'm doing a double batch of the bread because we have quite a few people coming in. <laughs> well, you know, cheese, bread, butter, all that good crap. We love this house, so the bread will probably go first. I read a couple of different recipes on this, and I think what I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and sift. This is sifting, so I want to sift my ingredients. From what I've learned before, that this helps make um, your breads or your cakes when you sift your dry components. It's supposed to help it be fluffier. All right, so we need three cups of all-purpose flour, but I'm doing a double batch. We're gonna do six. Let's get my... Uh, everything that I moved over here, because apparently when I decided to start prepping, I didn't bring all the rest of my ingredients. I need a bigger damn kitchen. And I'm hoping to add on a pantry. A butler's pantry would be so awesome. Ooh. That'd be high rise, high rise, butler pantry. And the butler and cook would still be me. Okay. So, this is a half cup. It's the only one that really fits in my flour, so. Okay. So I'm going to do it like in one batch of two, three, four. Okay, I guess I get there. This is a half cup. This is our first three cups. I'm going to go ahead and add in a half a teaspoon of baking soda and. Ah, 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 ah. Oh, there it is. Okay, so we have our baking soda here. We're just going to go ahead and do half. I'm just going to do one batch at a time so it's easier half and then now I have a sea salt so it's a three-fourth so I'm just gonna do a half and a half of this there we go um and now you need your sugar which I did not bring down because I forgot about that again one of sugar and that is your tablespoon of sugar and then also your sharp cheddar cheese but what I'm gonna do since I'm making a double batch I'm gonna shift this sift this and then I'm going to do one more, exactly the same way before we put our wet ingredients in. So this is also how you powder. If you have a, um, powdered sugar, and if you have a dessert that you want to lightly powder, powder, or lightly dust a dessert, this is also this is what this is used for as well. Put it in there. Now we're going to do the same thing again, since we're making a double batch. Side, and I need a little bit of flour on my hand. The dust, and I, I kind of ran out, so I'm just going to put this right here. This is where our bread's going to go. 
So now we want to put in, you can put sc um, chopped scallions in this, you can put bacon in it, you can put all sorts of cheese, it doesn't matter. We're going to go with the cheddar cheese. And since I'm doing a double batch, I went ahead and it's uh, one cup sharp, so this is probably about two cups. I did that earlier, so go ahead and put your cheese in. And the next thing you need for your moisture, your last item, is going to be your buttermilk. Now, I had already made some homemade butter it's to the side, and this is the buttermilk. This is what you get after you make your homemade butter. That's one of the reasons why I made it, because I wanted to have this in our recipe. So, of our buttermilk, we need uh, one and one-fourth cup. So, oh, oh my God, we're back to math. One-fourth plus one-fourth, it'd be two-eighths, but two-eighths? No, no. two-fourths. Two two-fourths, which is one-half. So that'd be two-and-a-half cups. Oh, my God. Proud of you. Holy shit, I learned something again. What did I say? Two-and-a-half cups. Two cups right here. Who knew? But I also know that I'm gonna get messy. God damn person. I don't like him sometimes. What right does he have to go around and school us on nothing? Anything. Alright, so I am gonna do two and a half cups of the buttermilk. Oh, yeah. Alright, this is where we're ready to get messy, everybody. So that is heating up for and we are just gonna mix this together. Reminds me of, uh, have you guys ever had that boxed uh, red lobster biscuit mix? That's with cheddar cheese. This is how it makes me seem like. That's what it reminds me of, making those stupid red lobster biscuits. Maybe red lobster biscuits are Irish soda breads. <gasps> Total mindfuck. Right there, people. Ah, what you say, young one? I think we found something. Oh, uh, and if you agree, comment below. Maybe, yeah, try it out. First time we've ever made this. Who knows? This month we're doing trying to do mostly Irish meals. Now, I've got to split this in two, and I have a lovely... Can I go through here, My voice just went weird on me. Uh, great. I lost it. I did. Oh, right door. <clears throat> right door. <laughs> All right, I'm going to cut this in half. Like I said, because I'm making two, so I'm going to make a circular loaf. Make sure that your pan does have a little dusting. I don't know, I guess you just kind of put the best you can in the circle. That's all I'm doing. And it also says that it's very important that you make either just one center cut or just one long cut. It's better than the other. Yeah, that's all right. I hope. Is that okay? Here, maybe I'll do this. <laughs> Let's add a little bit more to this one. It's the first time doing it. I don't want to mess it up too bad. Okay, that looks a little better. Even. Yeah, you got it. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna do the cross. I, you know, I, I'm not sure where they said just take a knife. I think this will help work just fine too. Maybe I'll just use a knife so I screw it. Do what they said. Just make a cross. Or you can just make one line. This is supposed to help it cook evenly. And again, first time I've done this, so I'm just going by a couple of recipes and researches that I found. Now, so let me wash off my hands real quick and then we're gonna stick this in the oven. Ahead and pop these in the oven and add 30 to 35 minutes. So once I put this in, I'm actually going to put my timer on. I'm going to set this on the middle rack of the oven and let's, you know, cross our fingers where that is going. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take those potatoes. So now you're going to put your potatoes in. If you want to come over here and smell this page, this has been cooking. We have about another half an hour to an hour. Put the lead back on top. We are going to let these set on simmer and cook. Right. So, so the bread is typically done, basically done. I'm just going to take it out now because I snuck a little peek and we're good. And I'm, I'm actually pretty shocked and pretty pleased, pleased about how this turned out. Ooh. So, and I hope it's not gooey in the middle. So before I make a decision, I'm, I don't want to break anything that's there, but I do want to poke it lightly with a fork, not where it's crisp. I'm just going to don't touch the hot pan. Let's see if this is doughy. Okay, so now the here's the thing. I went and I poked my fork in there, and it is still doughy in the middle. Though the outside looks good. Now here's the thing. I don't want this to get so brown to where it burns, like my finger is burning. I'm going to actually. It doesn't state this in the recipe. It doesn't ask this. I just know from fixing other products that if you want to keep things from burning but still cooking, throw some tin foil over it. So that is what I'm going to do. 
I'm going to place some tin foil over this so it doesn't get any darker, but yet the insides are going to cook. So I'm going to throw this in for, I'm going to say 10 minutes, um, and then we are going to check this again. But that's okay because we've got the vegetables to throw in too. So is we're going to add the rest of the vegetables into our pot. Now, I don't know if the potatoes are starting to feel... Uh, in all actuality, the potatoes do not feel that done to me. So what I'm going to do now, because cooking is never perfect, it never comes on time the way you want to, it's very infuriating. I'm going to turn this up to a four. I know that this is done, but I need those potatoes to cook too, so I think I need a little higher heat. Trial by error? Mm -hmm. Definitely trial by error. I've had a lot of those. All right, you guys, we'll be back in just a few minutes and we'll check up on it and see how it goes. Okay, um, all right. So let's check this bread again. I'm gonna shut this in case we gotta put it in. So, it's looking, see, since I put that on, it's not that dark. So let's check this metal again. It is still just really doughy. It's not as doughy as it was before. So, okay, you guys, uh, 10 minutes is really good on it before. And I'm gonna actually, let's go, I'm pretty sure 10 to 15 and this sucker's gonna be done. So, why don't we go for 10 again? So we don't overstay. Okay. All right, turn it up again just a little bit more. I'm not gonna put these other vegetables in. Well, the carrots are pretty thick, so yeah, we'll just turn it up. Let's go ahead and put those in. The cabbage becomes Not too much. If you just get it cooking really good and you shut it off. Ah! Oh. Oh, man down, mini men down. And then I'm gonna sprinkle it with some pepper. I know my family likes pepper, so I'm gonna put a little bit extra on there, but that's a nice coating. All right, I'm gonna put the lid back on. I'm gonna situate this, make sure it's right where it needs to be. And I'm just gonna turn it up a little bit. I need that heat to come up. Those potatoes just are not going on this shit. And I believe this time should be good enough for us to let it rest. Because while it rests, it will continue cooking. And I touch the fucking thing again. Good job. Alright, so let's take a look at this. I've lost my damn fork again. I met right oh, there. Oh, right here. Idiot. Oh, yeah. Okay. That looks good. Okay. Not bad. Uh, hi. Uh, as uh, most of you, I hopefully uh, probably know, uh, I am the videographer uh, slash the sidekick for Messy Kitchen. We're doing a taste test of Irish soda bread. So get it done. Uh, what do you recommend? Uh, butter or no butter? Well, I like butter. Just butter is good. So that's up to you. I'm sure you're used we'll to it. With some homemade butter. It's been a bit since. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure I've ever had your homemade uh -uh. butter. No, you haven't. But I'm not the, the hugest, uh, you know, butter. I think if something's good, you know. Mm -hmm. Butter just adds a little extra creaminess oh. to it, I think. It smells good. Oh, 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 it's oh, crunchy. Oh, <laughs> it's crunchy. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it's crunchy. Uh, maybe five minutes would have been long enough. And the bread, but it's still good. I mean, yeah, it's crunchy. Wow. Very good. Biscuit. Mm -hmm. Biscuit. Biscuit. Yeah. Oh, now we know how to make biscuits. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, I had to take the lid off, and I'm actually going to grab these because they've already burnt myself twice today. I'm going to bring this closer so I don't make that big of a mess. Shut this off. Once you take the meat out, which is what we're attempting to do, I can't even see where the meat's at. Because I cannot see a darn fruity thing that I'm doing with everything in there. So let us get a big pan of some sort. Good catch. Really good catch. And let's get put some of the vegetables in here. Well, there's the meat. I finally found it. Wow. Okay. I'll probably end up putting this back in there, but I couldn't see. I couldn't see where the darn meat was at. Okay, let's try this again without having anything fall mm -hmm. apart. Oh, do you want to put it in something? No, I'm going to no, put it right here. So here we go. We are gonna let this rest minimal 15 minutes. Did you kill a chicken? <laughs> no, I did not kill any animals in the process of this meal. Let's see how this is. It's been resting for a while. I'm not sure where the grain is. I think the grain's here by the look of it. So I'll do kind of some side cuts. Let's see how that looks on the inside. Ooh. Ooh, that looks really good and juicy. How nice does that look? 
oh my gosh, tender. And there's still the steam coming off mm -hmm. of it. Mm-hmm. Let's uh, finish cutting this up. <laughs> I actually like the fact we didn't take off the fat cap. That looks good. Yeah. Mm. Yep, now you guys, we're going to start plating. 